Hello, today's video is discussing a pretty big topic. It's something that is now global and you'll all have heard of it, especially recently. It's the dreaded coronavirus. Lots of you may be wondering, how come you're not at school anymore? Some of you will still be at school, but it's not school as you know it. There'll be children from different year groups in your class and only a few teachers. Those of you that are learning from home may be being taught by your parents. Some of your parents will be working from home as well. Not only that, but outside there are fewer cars on the streets. Parks and playgrounds are pretty empty. Supermarkets too. Life is not as we know it. Playdates are a thing of the past and birthday parties have been cancelled. Things are a little bit weird. We've all heard grown-ups talking about the coronavirus. In fact, before lockdown, it was pretty much all I heard people discussing. The person at the checkout in the supermarket, the postman, passers-by on the street and parents at the school gates. But what is the coronavirus? Not that long ago, we hadn't even heard of it. And now it's dictating our lives. It even cancelled my son's birthday party. He wasn't best pleased. So if you've had your birthday party cancelled, know that you're not alone. In fact, you probably saved lives. You're pretty much a superhero. You all are. Because staying inside all the time isn't easy. So let's discuss the culprit, the coronavirus. So what is a virus? Viruses are the smallest of the microbes or microorganisms. They're so tiny, it's said that 500 million rhinoviruses, which are the virus that cause the common cold, can fit on a pinhead, 500 million, that's how titchy they are. Viruses can't live on their own. They need living cells to live inside, which is why if there's some virus, say on a cardboard box or just on a surface, it can only last for probably a few days, depending on the virus. But they exist solely to multiply. How annoying is that? And they can only do this inside other living cells. So what is the coronavirus? Well, there's lots of different coronaviruses. Believe it or not, you may have even caught a coronavirus before. Um, some coronaviruses just result in a cold, although the rhinovirus is the most common cause of the common cold. So why is this coronavirus so bad? The coronavirus that everyone's talking about at the moment, though, is called COVID-19. And COVID-19 is really, really quite contagious. And all people can be vectors. Vectors are what spread the virus and carry it about from person to person. Um, the virus can be spread through tiny droplets in the air. So if you have coronavirus and you sneeze, for example, or cough, little droplets may go and rest on a surface or even be breathed in by another human being. So different surfaces can support the virus for different amounts of time, not very long, thankfully. Copper results in four hours, according to studies. Stainless steel and plastic, it can survive on there for 72 hours. And on cardboard, it can survive for 24 hours. So um, it's really important to wash your hands after touching any surfaces at all. And it's really important not to go too near other people because not all people show symptoms. So some people might have the virus and not even know it themselves, but you don't want to be breathing in their air droplets. Otherwise you might get the virus too. COVID-19 shows different symptoms in different people. It can cause sore throats, fever, it can cause coughing, shortness of breath, muscle pain. Sometimes people report a loss of taste. The thing is, some people don't even show symptoms at all, so they might not even know they have it, as I mentioned before. Luckily, COVID-19 doesn't really affect children as much as it does grown-ups, and it affects old people the worst. We hadn't even heard of coronavirus until not that long ago. So where did it come from? Where was it before? How did it appear? Well, it's thought that viruses can often start off in animals and the coronavirus is thought to have started off in bats. Bats have a really good immune system apparently. So the coronavirus could get stronger and stronger while living in bats. And then when the coronavirus made the leap, from a bat possibly to another animal, to a human being, 
That's when we started to hear about it. So how can we make it go away? Well, as I mentioned before, the two things that we've got to all do is wash our hands and for two happy birthdays, because that is how long it takes to break down that spiky outer layer of the virus. And also make sure you socially distance, not from your family, of course, but lots of you will have noticed that you're not hanging out with other people as you usually do. The quicker we stick to these rules, the quicker things go back to normal and coronavirus will go down. In the meantime, here are some top tips of things you can do in social isolation. Number one, you could write a letter to a school friend or even a card, maybe if it's someone's birthday. In the olden days, people used to write letters so much more. It'd be fun as well, because they'll probably write back and you'll receive something in the post. Or why not to someone living on their own? It's all very well being socially isolated with your families, but lots of people have no one in the house with them right now. It might be fun to write to an elderly person and it would be such a nice surprise for them to get a letter. You could alternatively make a card. I'm gonna show you how to make a pop-up card. Um, so to make a pop-up card, what you need to do is get a piece of card like that and fold it in half. That's the main basis of your card. And then cut out a strip of paper like this and fold it in half and then fold it again at the end so that when you unfold it, it kind of will look something like that, like a little pair of legs. Um, then what you're going to do is get some glue or some sticky tape. I've got some sticky tabs here. And you're going to stick each end of your pair of funny little paper legs into your card. Now, a good tip to make sure it's positioned exactly right is to stick it so that the fold in the middle is aligned to the fold on your card. So if I just show you here, I'm going to line that up there and then stick my two ends down. And then when you do that, you'll see that that then folds nicely flat when your card is shut. So there we go. So next, you can decide what is gonna be your pop-up image. You could draw a picture of a person, you could write a message. Um, I have cut out a bit of card here, which I will stick there. And so that is gonna be the element that pops up when I open my card. So this little bit of card is ready for me to draw something on. Let me just uh, draw a person going, surprise, that'll do it. But obviously you can take time with yours and make it really special. I'm just demonstrating, there we go, surprise. And then I'm just gonna stick that on to my card, there we go. And then you'll see that basically that pops up. See, it's 3D and then when you close it, it's flat. Surprise! So there we go, a proper 3D card that will really impress people and brighten up someone's day who's in social isolation. <gasps> I forgot to tell you, to decorate the outside of your card as well. I mean, I would have thought you knew that, obviously, but just in case, um, you could draw a picture on the outside. This could be for a friend that I haven't seen in ages because I've decorated it with a strip of cardboard saying miss you and then I've stuck a pom-pom on with two googly eyes and then there's some other stickers around the side and a fluffy feather. Um, you could draw a lovely picture, especially for if it's for an elderly person in isolation. They might want to see what your drawing is like. And then inside, when you're writing in your card, why not tell them about how you've been passing your days, fun things you've done, maybe a joke or something like that. Make your card funky on the outside, pop up on the inside, and have a brilliant message too. Number two, get helpful around the house. Do all those jobs that you've been putting off and haven't done for ages. For instance, why not tidy your bedroom? Your parents will be so pleased. I reckon I'm going to tidy up this box of crafting things because it's in such a mess. I can never find anything in it. Look at the bottom. It's just a complete state. You can't actually see, but it's full of lots of bits of weird things tape and staples and all sorts, paper fasteners. I'm going to tidy that up and then I'll feel so satisfied. If you are helpful around the house, your parents will be so pleased. 
Number three, why not try out some weird food combinations? Now is a really good time to not be so fussy with food and to experiment. You just don't know what might taste nicer than you're expecting. A favourite of mine is cream cheese on a chocolate biscuit. It tastes just like a chocolate cheesecake. I have a crazy friend who loves toast and ketchup and sometimes even has toast with chocolate and cheese and swears by it. Maybe I might give it a try. My kids really like Marmite and hummus on rice cakes. I really like it too. Weirdly enough, Marmite and hummus is a really good combination. But anyway, you could try out different things. Maybe your parents will suggest some interesting things to you, but it's really good to be adventurous with food. You may not like it, but you might always try in small quantities because we don't want you to waste food at all. But in these times of social isolation, it's good to not be too fussy about food. Number four. Go easy on your parents or whoever's looking after you. The more well-behaved you are, the better. It's not easy all living on top of each other in social isolation. So it's good to just make sure that it's harmony in the house. Uh, you could think of a joke, maybe make one up to tell them. Some of the jokes my kids make up are funnier than real ones. They don't always make sense, but they're definitely funny. Or why not think of other ways to entertain them? Maybe you could make a puppet out of an old sock like my son did. Hello. You could put on a puppet show or you could even just use a cuddly toy. I've got three eyes. So have I. Let's get to go and socially isolate. Yay. So I already mentioned that coronavirus is pretty contagious. But to show you just how contagious it is, if we take the average um, infection rate. So one person with coronavirus will usually spread it to two and a half. So for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to round it up to three. And this will show just how quickly lots of people can be infected by just one person. One person spreads it to three people. Three people spread it to nine people. Nine people spread it to 27 people. 27 people spread it to 81, who spread it to 243, who spread it to 729. And before you know it, 2,187 people are infected. So I've just shown it in seven steps. But it just goes to show that one person in seven steps can get to 2,187 people. It's a really difficult time, but there are some positives. There are loads of things that are different right now, but some of them are really, really positive. Although you're inside a lot of the time, many of you will have parents that work really hard and they're not around as much as you'd like them to be. And now you can spend loads of quality time with them. So make the most of it. It won't last forever. And before you know it, you'll be back in school and they'll be back to work. This is a unique, unique time that may never come again in your life. Number two, have you noticed the cars that aren't driving around the roads, as we mentioned before, but also planes. There are less planes flying in the skies right now. In fact, loads and loads of processes that create carbon footprint and pollution every day have lessened now, which is only a good thing that there's less pollution. And it also means that you can see the stars much more clearly in the sky at night. Why not have a look? See if you can find some constellations that you've heard about. There are some really, really popular ones. Stars that are easy to spot and planets such as Venus might be much more visible now than they ever will be again or have been so far. And lastly, lots of us will find new habits and hobbies. Maybe you're reading more books or you've taken up something that you've never done before, like crafting and making things. This is a really good opportunity to find new ways of life that are good. Maybe your parents are having more meetings for work over video calling. And that could be something that continues into the future. These new habits that we're taking up now may become things that just become a way of life going forward. Time now to see what a coronavirus looks like. Many viruses take this same form. So you'll see that in the very middle, 
there is what we call RNA. It's genetic coding material. We've got DNA, which codes our genetics in all of our cells in our body. And um, it must be said that although this coronavirus isn't good, microbes are not all bad. In fact, loads and loads of microbes are good and they're essential for life on Earth. So don't get overly worried after this whole episode. Um, carrying on, this bit here is the capsid, which is a protein coat. And then this bit is the outer coat or envelope, which has got spikes on it. And it's made of lipids or fats, which means that detergent or soap can break it down quite nicely because that's what soap does, which is why washing your hands is so important. And you need to do it for two happy birthdays because that's how long it takes to break down this outer fatty layer. The spikes mean that the virus can actually attach itself quite well to the cells in our body. So the spikes come along and then they attach to this, which is our human cells. Uh, and then what happens is this material here comes out and it enters the human cell and it uses the human cell to replicate and make more. And then they all come out of the human cell and they can often leave debris behind and, you know, they can leave you unwell. And then they go off to try and repeat the whole process. So that is it for the coronavirus video. I hope that this has helped a little bit to explain what coronavirus is, where it came from and how we can make it go away. Now, before I say goodbye for today, um, some of you might have had trouble sleeping at night. It's quite hard to unwind when you haven't been at school all day. Relaxing in general can be tricky. So I thought it might be nice to share some pointers. First of all, you need to get comfy. If it's nighttime, that's probably in your bed. Or if it's daytime, find a good chair that you can snuggle up on if you're just trying to get a bit of relaxation. There's a really good breathing technique you can do where you breathe in through your nose for a count of four, hold your breath for a count of four, and then breathe out for another count of four. You can do this three or four times and that will get you really relaxed. And then there are several techniques you can use. I used to sometimes pretend if I was going to sleep at night that I was on a beach. I'd close my eyes and imagine I was on the sand with the sun beating down on my face and the water lapping up my toes and just really taking in the whole situation. The sounds, the smells, how you feel when you can see the orange glow of the sun through your eyelids, even though your eyes are closed, and let that take you to a really relaxed place so that you can gently drift off. Another way to do it is to pretend that you're on stage, but you're acting as though you're sleeping. All the audience are watching you, so you have to stay still and pretend you're asleep while the actors do their thing. I've actually seen a play before where an actor had to pretend to be asleep for much of the play, and I was checking on him, and he really did look like he was sleeping. So see if you can replicate that. There are other things you can do too, like playing mind games or memory games. There's a really good one where you can get a four letter word and see how many changes of word by only switching one letter you get through to get to another end word. For instance, sack to bang, sack, back, bank, bang. And you can try words that are related. For example, bath to wash, bath, bash, wash. Or you could even try opposites such as warm to cold, warm, worm, word, cord, cold. So there you have it. You could go for really complicated things. You could even try five letter words. Anything that will help you drift off. But all of these techniques are really good. So for now, it's time for me to say good night. Night. Oh, and don't forget, please subscribe and spread the word. Happy homeschooling. Bye.